Hi, I'm Nick Redding, the Executive Director of Preservation Maryland, and as a part of our effort this anniversary, the Battle of Antietam, to bring you to some of the untold and overlooked stories of the Battle of Antietam, we're here on the Roulette Farm, almost smack dab center in the middle of the field. And over this farm, thousands of Union soldiers would have traversed on their way to what today, and has been known since that time of the battle, uh, were on their way to what was known as the, the Sunken Road, or, or Bloody Lane. Um, and over top this farm they crested. Um, it was here that they smashed into uh, the roulette beehives and caused quite the stir. Caused considerable damage on this farm, but because Union soldiers caused damage here, unlike the Muma farm, the roulette family uh, did receive compensation for the damage that was in endured here. Now, this farm, historically prior to the roulettes, was owned by John Miller, about 180 acres. Uh, and he owned this farm from 1820 until his death in 1856. Now, the slave quarter that I'm standing in front of was right here on the roulette farm. And Miller owned uh, three slaves um, that would have very likely lived here in this quarter. Um, and there was probably added to the spring house sometime around 1820 to house those slaves. Um, but William Roulette, uh, the owner of the property during the Civil War, during the Battle of Antietam, never owned slaves. But he did report in 1860 having two free living here in this household. Robert Simon, a 15-year-old farmhand, and Nancy Campbell, a 40-year-old woman employed as a servant. Now, Nancy was the former slave of Peter Miller, uh, who owned the property prior to the Roulettes. And when Peter died in 1856, he actually did own one woman. Uh, and according to Peter's will, Nancy then would become the property of his son, Andrew. Um, but in 1859, Andrew Miller freed Nancy Campbell. Uh, and her certificate of freedom was issued by the county as proof that she was no longer a slave. Um, she was a member of the Manor Church, a Dunker congregation north of Sharpsburg. Uh, and she's buried there in the Manor Church Cemetery after her death in 1892. Um, having never married, um, she left most of her money to Susan Rebecca Roulette, William Roulette's daughter, and to the children of Peter and Andrew Miller. Uh, she stayed here with the family um, after the Civil War and was a part of that family and ended up leaving her money to that family. Um, and her gravestone is inscribed with the words, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. Now this property, like every other property at the uh, Antietam battlefield, is imbued with a true sense of history. This is a place where history converges in many different ways, and there are layers of history here. There's the story of suffering and, and the, the sin of slavery. There is the story of Union and Confederate soldiers engaging each other. There's the story of the family and their loss. Um, and these are really powerful stories, stories that can be overlooked if we just look at the tactics of a battlefield. But the story of the Civil War is made much richer and much fuller and much more accurate when we talk about all of these, these stories and how they all converge in a place like Antietam Battlefield. Uh, and that's truly the job of the preservation community, to make sure that all of these stories are brought together so that we tell the full story of American history, an opportunity that we're provided here on this wonderfully preserved Antietam Battlefield.